Dual citizenship laws around the world have been changing for years, and the trend has come in the favor of allowing people to maintain more than one citizenship. Even though a lot of people don't even realize this is possible, today I'm going to share with you the trends that I see in the realm of dual citizenship and what you need to know so that you too can have more than one passport. Hey guys, I'm Andrew Henderson from Nomad Capitalist, and today I want to talk about the concept of dual citizenship. It's a confusing topic for a lot of people. There are a lot of misconceptions out there, and yet it's a topic that has been really evolving in this century. We've seen in just the last 20 years a lot of countries open up their dual citizenship laws to either make them more liberal or to allow people to maintain really as many citizenships as they like. And it's interesting to think that in as little as 20 years ago, countries like Australia actually had some relatively severe restrictions on maintaining dual citizenship. Countries in Europe, which are generally now pretty open to the concept, have had restrictions. And what's interesting is, is we help certain people with citizenship by descent, where we go back and get a passport through someone's family tree. The worst thing that we often see for these people is where their parent or grandparent or great-grandparent, the person who used to live in, in a European country, for example, came to, let's say, the United States or Australia or Canada, became naturalized in that country. Many of those European countries, just a couple of decades ago, did not allow you to maintain more than one citizenship. And so those relatives lost their ancestral passport, and therefore the people that we work with today, a couple generations down the line, have lost their chance to go back and get their passport. Now, no one really keeps statistics on dual citizenship. The, the numbers are are kind of thin, and so we can only go based on certain amounts of speculation. But my theory, for a number of years, ever since I wrote an article on dual citizenship countries back in 2014 that's been read uh, close to a million times, I think, and inspired many others to write the same article. But what I said back then was, you are seeing more and more countries opening up to the idea. It's simply very difficult for countries to not allow their citizens to have other passports. Okay. Now, if you are a US citizen, Canadian, Australian, British, Irish, most European countries, almost all of the American countries in, in Central and South America, uh, and there are some others as well, but almost all of these countries uh, allow you to maintain dual citizenship. And what that means is you can be, let's say, American, but you can also go and you can claim an Irish passport uh, through your Irish grandmother. Or you can be Canadian and you can go and live in London and eventually become a British citizen. What we talk about here at Nomad Capitalist is the idea that you can go out and get passports in as little as a matter of months through programs like Citizenship by Investment, through Fast Track Naturalization, and that by being a dual citizen, you're basically giving yourself options. You no longer have to pay high taxes just because the one country that you are tethered to says, hey, this is what we're doing. You no longer have to have limited investment opportunities in a century when so many economies around the world are opening up, yet sometimes your citizenship restricts that. You no longer have to be subject to all the different regulations that your country puts on you whenever they choose. A lot of people that we work with in the cryptocurrency space are concerned what their country is going to do in regulating them and making it almost impossible to do business. And as we've seen throughout history, having a plan B has been a good idea for a lot of people who could have protected their businesses, their fortunes, or even their lives by having more than one passport. And so a lot of people out there, a lot of you watching, already have the ability to be a dual citizen, and you might not even know it. And what I've talked about before is how in most countries, not all, but in most countries that allow dual citizenship, it's generally unfettered. As in, you can have two passports, you can have three, you can have ten, right? Uh, we know of a guy who's had eight passports. I have uh, uh, multiple passports. Uh, it's possible to do that, right? And so uh, as long as all the countries that you're a citizen of allow dual or multiple citizenship, you can have really as many as you want. And, and I made a video where I talked about how many is enough. Uh, but really, you know, making sure that you have options is very important. But there's three things that have come out recently that really uh, extend the trends and make me think that you're going to continue to see more countries opening up to this. So 
The Netherlands has had a policy. The Netherlands has been one of the European countries that was more strict on dual citizenship. Now, I know uh, a number of dual American Dutch citizens, so it is possible, but it's more strict in some cases. One of the things that they were strict about is if you're a dual citizen and you live outside of the country for more than 10 years, you can have your passport taken away. And so recently that was challenged in court. I'm not saying that they're going to have unfettered dual citizenship in the Netherlands, but the initial ruling was that uh, it could be in conflict with European law to forbid people to be dual citizens without actually living in the country. So that's one trend from Europe that has been commenting. Uh, another trend is in Germany, which is again a country that was always a bit more strict, not you know, totally outlawing it, but they had some caveats. It was, a, it was a gray area of sorts. And now Germany is beginning to open up and relax some of the restrictions. In Japan, a country that was always considered relatively strict on dual citizenship, I know people who are dual, uh, numerous people who are dual Japanese and have another passport, but there was a case of, I think it was a tennis player, who was Japanese and American. You had to make a decision after your 18th birthday which one you wanted to keep. They kept the Japanese passport, but it sparked a firestorm by folks, even in the, the relatively immigration-unfriendly Japan, of saying, well, you know, how is this on our side? How is this in our favor? Maybe let's change this. And we've seen some movement even in Japan. Now, there are some countries like China that you probably won't see movement in. But what's interesting is in some of these countries that are pretty strict against dual citizenship, what I've seen is, practically speaking, people maintain more than one passport. And as long as you don't flaunt it, you're OK. Obviously, you want to make sure that you're doing things legally. Uh, and so I can't really give you any advice on that. But certainly plenty of Chinese people go out and get passports in other countries. Uh, and retain their Chinese nationality, even though they're not supposed to. But what I see outside of a few outliers like China is you're going to see more and more countries opening up to this. Some countries, it's not just about opening up globally to anybody. It's not about immigration. But in Central Asia, for example, you've seen a little bit of movement in countries that don't allow dual citizenship to be more flexible, seeing that some of those countries' citizens have gone to, for example, Russia. And they might want to be Russian and and their original nationality, or potentially vice versa. Um, and so that's one area where things have opened up. In Europe, for example, as they become, uh, as they exercise more and more of their liberal values, you've seen eventually most of these countries get around to doing that. Um, what I've also seen is some countries opening up to dual citizenship. Georgia, where I have a home, uh, relaxed its restrictions on dual citizenship for natural born citizens. What they also did in turn was they expanded the amount of time that you need to live there to become naturalized from six years to 10 years. Believably, in my mind, that was an effort to say, you know, let's make it more difficult for people to come in. But if you're already here, if you're one of ours, you know, we're going to give you more flexibility. Historically, you know, countries like Georgia, the Baltic states have restricted dual citizenship for fear of people maintaining loyalties with Russia. But what I'm seeing is some of these countries with those issues of having, you know, loyalty issues, finding other ways to address that. So all in all, I think you're seeing a lot of positive trends for dual citizenship. I expect that to continue to the extent that a lot of countries already allow it. And so eventually I think it'll become even more common. It'll become even more allowable and the trend will dip uh, merely because there aren't that many countries left to, to hop on board. You'll always have some countries that are restrictive, but I think in, in an increasingly global world, you're seeing cases where it's becoming more and more permissible. For those of you for whom it's already permissible, I want you to understand that. I want you to understand that you can be dual, you can be multiple, you can go out and get your second passport. We help people do that every day here at Nomad Capitalist. Dual citizenship in my opinion, it's a good thing because it gives you more options and now it's available to more people. How can Nomad Capitalist help you? Four ways. Number one, subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell to make sure you get our new video every day. Number two, get a copy of Nomad Capitalist, the book. You'll learn a lot of my personal experiences over a dozen years of studying this stuff as well as exactly some of the strategies that you can use to build your Nomad Capitalist plan. Number three, if you're not sure where to start, but you want to come and learn from my team and I, you want to come and mingle with like-minded people, learn more about our live conference, Nomad Capitalist Live. It's coming up soon. And number four, if you want some help right now because you've got a burning issue, you need something solved, you want to lower your taxes, get a second passport, or build the Nomad Capitalist lifestyle of your dreams, 
Go to nomadcapitalist.com and click on Become a Client.